educational issues. <clears throat> We're going to talk about a number of them. The schools and religion, criticism of education, curriculum reform, appraisal of that reform, and higher education. Let's get going. The schools and religion. Going back, remember in early New England, we had a theocracy. That's a form of government in which there's no distinction between church and state. Uh, with the Constitution, we had a separation of church and state. When I was in high school, actually I was teaching school at this time, uh, one day we said the uh, opening prayer, the next day we were told, you guys can't pray anymore. Uh, there had been a Supreme Court case, Abington Township versus Shemp. How do I remember that for the final exam? Because Shemp was one of the stooges, remember him? Uh, he came in after the first three. He was actually a bro he was actually an original uh, stooge, but uh, dropped out for a while. Curly came in. When Curly left, Shemp came back and uh, became a stooge again. He's the one tall one with the face like a sack of walnuts. Uh, anyway, I remember uh, the school prayer issue because it's the one with Shemp in it. Uh, one day we said, Almighty God, we, we acknowledge our dependence upon me, our parents, our teachers, our country, and upon all mankind. And the next day we were told, you can't say that anymore. This ruling focused on school prayer and Bible reading. There was lots of support for it. There was lots of flack for it. The issue is not yet resolved. I mean, we've got we've got marching bands in this neighborhood who uh, form crosses that that march around the field at halftime. Uh, we've got kids that pray publicly uh, and get into trouble. We've got cheerleaders that write Bible verses on banners that football teams smash through at the beginning of games. And we're getting bad press and TV coverage because of that. So the issue is not yet resolved and may never be. It may be back. It may be with us forever. Criticism of education. Smith and Bester are joined by others in a post-Sputnik explosion of criticism. Education criticisms of, as a little label, was added to the Reader's Guide to Periodical Literature for the years 1958 to 1962 reflecting just how many articles there were that dealt with that topic. Two major spokespersons stepped to the fore. One is Vice Admiral Hyman G. Rickover. He was the commander of the first nuclear submarine. He was future President Jimmy Carter's boss. He was the head man, whereas Carter, I think, was an ensign on that particular uh, boat. Rickover wrote a book, gave speeches in which he evoked nationalistic and futuristic arguments for reforming the schools. His first book was called Education and Freedom, and it was published in 1959. It was anti-comprehensive school. Remember those comprehensive schools? They're the ones in which vocational subjects and academic subjects are taught in the same building. Rickover was anti 
life adjustment education. He did not like life adjustment education. He wanted us to go back to the ba basics and he wanted us, wanted us to stress, I'm having a tough time today, to stress mathematics and science as a means of catching up with those pesky Russians. He also wrote American Education, a National Failure in 1963. This was basically an account of his report to the House Appropriations Committee. He was invited to speak to them, and the transcript of that interaction became the text of American Education, a National Failure. In it, he said, to compete with the United Soviet Socialist Republic technology, we must allocate more money to education. No problem there. Abolish the comprehensive high school. Do away with the schools in which vocational subjects and academic subjects were taught in the same building. He wanted to establish separate high schools, separate instruction for talented kids, for average kids, and below average kids. In other words, you, you know, you, you got a high school, you've got to have three institutions now to serve high school age uh, people. The bright ones will go to Smarty Tech over here. The average kids will go to average high school, and the below average one will go to, uh, I don't know what name we could call them. It probably wouldn't be a good one. He wanted a system of national standards. He wanted everyone on the same page. Everyone taking the same courses. Everyone taking the same exams. Again, that was Rick over. Uh, he voiced those concerns in 59. He said them again in 63. He recommended elimination of ability to pay from public education. I, I don't know where that comes from. Retention of ability to learn. Separate secondary schools. He wanted highly, highly qualified teachers to whom much freedom is given in their work and whose influence on all aspects of education is great, notably in setting scholastic standards through national examinations. I'll say that once more, through national examinations. I uh, went to school and taught school in New York, where we did have the end of the year regents examinations, and they were statewide Every kid who took chemistry in the state took the same exam at the end of the year. Uh, it was a somewhat comfortable system. The teachers knew what to expect. The students knew what to expect. I don't know how that would be expanded to a nation. At least we'd all be on the same page. Also, he wanted total absence of non-teaching school principals and administrators. And I hear some cheering out there. He wanted no such thing as a person sitting in the central office doing nothing every day but shuffling paper. He didn't want those high up muckety mucks sitting around the central office building sifting paper. He didn't mind if people did some of that, but he wanted everyone to have a foot in the real business of schools, which was the teaching of kids. He also called for the use of government grants as a means of raising national standards in education by making acceptance of the standards out of inspection to check on the standards a condition for awarding grants. And I think we've, we're kind of sneaking in that direction today if we haven't already got there. If you want federal money today and you apply for a federal grant, you have to meet 
the conditions that the granting agency establishes uh, with having to do with, with standards and with hiring practices and the like. Rickover also wants, and we'll leave Rickover behind after this, uh, national examinations leading to national diplomas designed to permit great variety in selection of test subjects. Yet clear out indication on diplomas of the type of examination taken and passed. So he wanted uh, A diplomas, B diplomas, C diplomas, through the back door diplomas, and the like. And he wanted cooperation of all interested parties in setting up the examinations and great care in evaluating them. Uh, we went through a period of time not too long ago when we were exam crazy. I suspect Rickover uh, would have been very much on board with that time. Hopefully it is over. How might our lives be different today if Congress had listened to Rickover in 1963? That would make an excellent essay question. However, since we've only got seven weeks here and uh, all you've got time for, in essence, is to watch these lectures and, and uh, learn the content there, we're not going to have any essay questions. We're going to have short answer questions multiple guests, as I like to call them, and true-false. So uh, uh, we're not going to have a sequence.